नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू स्टडी आई क्यू बिफोर यू बिगिन टूडेज डिस्कशन वॉम विशेष फ्रॉम माई साइड टू ऑल द स्टडी आई क्यू व्यूवर्स ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ रक्षाबंधन अ फेस्टिवल अ ग्रेट फेस्टिवल टू सेलिब्रेट द ब्यूटिफुल बॉन्ड अमॉन्ग सिबलिंग ऑन दिस ओकेजन स्टडी आई क्यू इज ब्रिंगिंग रक्षाबंधन सेल इफ यूज माई कोड राहुल लाइफ टिल थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑगस्ट दैट मीन्स टिल फॉर फॉर द नेक्स्ट फ्यू आर्स इफ यू यूज माई कोड यू विल गेट discounts on all the courses even on our flagship course that is prelims to interview initiative you'll get discount over this price as well please take benefit of this discount which is going on it will be available for just a few hours you do know that prelims to interview program of ours is the most comprehensive program which is available in the market for preparation of upsc civil services examination where we will be helping you to all the stages through prelims mains interview there is one to one mentorship there is a prelims test series there is a mains residential program there is group mentorship everything the whole shebang in this particular program enroll now get benefit of the rakshabandhan say i'll see you in the class all right let's begin our discussion for today you do know that we are discussing some important topics for upsc civil services mains examination 2023 i'll be i am discussing science and technology topics before this we have focused on topics connected with ICT information communications technology where we discussed about artificial intelligence blockchain we discussed about uh, some of the ideas connected with nanotechnology we we uh, spoke about biotechnology genetic engineering etc today we'll move on and talk about nuclear technology a very very important topic again i would say nuclear technology or topics connected to nuclear energy they are they are more easier to prepare very similar to how we discussed with respect to nanotechnology if you create a framework for yourself and keep yourself updated with current affairs then it becomes a very easy topic to attempt questions and if you look at some of the questions that have appeared before you will see that they are quite generic they are quite generic where the focus is on understanding nuclear energy and programs connected with it what is india's policy what are india's programs connected with enhancing nuclear science and nuclear technology we are focusing more and more on gaining that energy security in our country and for that nuclear energy is very important yes we are talking about more and more amount of renewable energy but nuclear energy it comes under the domain of clean energy i wouldn't say it is exactly renewable energy but emissions from nuclear power plants or nuclear energy would be minimal of course there are some other dangers which we'll talk about but we are going to enhance more and more of nuclear energy in our country so some questions have come where upsc has asked with the growing energy needs should india keep on expanding nuclear energy program yes or no take a stand and discuss the facts and fears associated with nuclear energy one time a question had come like this another time given an account of growth and development of nuclear science and technology in india what is the advantage of fast breeder reactor program in india so we'll understand we'll understand all the integrities connected to nuclear energy and i'll also tell you about some of the pitfalls or some of the issues that aspirants might have while understanding this particular topic because whenever we discuss nuclear energy there is there is a narrow viewpoint of people they connect nuclear energy directly with nuclear fission or nuclear power plants but there are so many other applications which are connected with nuclear science we'll talk about them as well in this interaction so we'll try to prepare in a wholesome way regarding nuclear energy and we'll get we'll take some of the updates from current affairs as well all right let's begin first of all what do you understand by nuclear science and nuclear technology i always tell you the difference between science and technology science basically gives you gives you the basic theoretical part based on experimentations observations and some some kind of small applications you create a theory for yourself create simple laws rules regulations of that particular subject and when you apply them for your benefit it becomes an applied science that is technology so nuclear science and nuclear technology is any idea where you take advantage of reactions or interactions which is connected with the atomic nuclei all right so under nuclear technology nuclear energy or characteristic of a nucleus characteristic of a nucleus is used to use for some application mostly we talk of nuclear energy again when we talk about nuclear energy uh, yes we have used it in a good way as well as bad way we can we can give example of uh, the ill effects or the bad consequences of nuclear energy as the nuclear weapons yes but 
we use nuclear energy for civil civilian purposes as well predominantly for the generation of electricity but when we talk about nuclear energy we discuss that under the domain of nuclear fission reaction or nuclear fusion reaction but you need to understand at the end of the discussion we'll also talk about some other applications which are connected with nuclear science and applications connected with it so first we'll focus on fusion fission then we'll talk about some other applications as well in this interaction we'll also get to know about what is the status of nuclear energy in our country right so let's talk about nuclear energy whenever we discuss this there are two ideas that come into our brain one is nuclear fusion and another one is nuclear fission now by name itself you do understand nuclear fusion nuclear fusion is a concept where two smaller nuclei remember two smaller nuclei they combine they combine to give you a larger nucleus and when this happens there is a lot of energy that is released along with it high energy neutrons are also released the other process the opposite process would be nuclear fission now fission happens when a bigger nuclei when a bigger nuclei it breaks up into other smaller nucleus a bigger a bigger nucleus i would say rather pardon me bigger nucleus it breaks into smaller nuclei releasing energy and along with it other neutrons now this is nuclear fusion and nuclear fission now a question comes into your mind sir why does this happen why does this happen all right see for a nuclear fusion to run two smaller new nucleus or two smaller nuclei they have to combine for this you have to put in energy or you need certain requirements for instance there is a lot of a uh, lot of energy which is required for fusion and we see fusion where in stars we see fusion in sun the natural thermonuclear fusion reaction because of intense heat which is provided then the two nuclei would fuse to form another larger nucleus same concept for fission what do i need does this larger nucleus it breaks into two automatically yes there is a natural process of nuclear fission as well and that is basically called as radioactive decay we'll discuss about this radioactive decay and uh, applications connected with nuclear isotopes at the end of the discussion but it can happen naturally also but what we do is we start the nuclear fission reaction artificially by bombarding high energy neutrons on a larger nucleus and this larger nucleus it will break into constant nuclei so what we get what we get here is nuclear fission breaking up of a bigger nucleus nuclear fusion joining of two smaller nuclei or other nuclei combining to form one nucleus so what are the materials that we talk about in fusion you do understand there is a requirement of smaller nuclei like deuterium tritium hydrogen etc these are basically isotopes of hydrogen only deuterium tritium when they combine they lead to creation of a slightly bigger nucleus that is helium but for a fissile material you need larger nucleus larger nucleus which are radioactive and a question comes up sir can all can all elements or can can all atoms they undergo nuclear fission no radioactive elements like uranium plutonium etc they undergo fission that means they break up into constituent nuclei now the question comes up sir why energy is released now you said that first of all for any reaction be it nuclear fission reaction or a fusion reaction what i am supposed to do i am supposed to give some some input to it now here the input would be temperature a lot of heat thousands ten thousands of degrees celsius of temperature is needed here and here you need high energy neutrons but once the reaction starts once the reaction starts we mention it as the criticality criticality of a nuclear reaction that means once that criticality is reached that means these neutrons which are released in nuclear fusion and fission along with that energy they automatically help sustain those reactions so we have already in our applications we have already gained that criticality with respect to nuclear fission please remember wherever we talk about nuclear power plants they are all nuclear fission based power plants where we have already gained criticality we are able to control that reaction we are able to sustainably start the nuclear fission reaction and control it as well but till now fusion reaction or its its commercial applications have not started 
clear i hope till here things are clear but there is one more question in your mind sir how is this energy released or what is the what is the reason behind that energy i want to understand there is a concept called as mass deficit or mass defect so this is one of the explanations for the energy release for instance a bigger nucleus when it breaks into two constituents now imagine 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 uh, the mass imagine the mass or the i, I would say the uh, atomic mass of this particular nucleus is x right now your understanding would be sir if this breaks into two constituents say two other nuclei y and z then my common sense tells me sir this equation should satisfy so x should basically be equal to y plus z correct because this x is a bigger nucleus and this bigger nucleus has atomic mass this much and if it if it breaks into two then according to law of conservation of masses these two should be equal correct that does not happen there is a small there is a very slight mass deficit or a mass defect that is the main reason behind the release of huge amount of energy in these reactions clear right the next question sir let's talk about fusion and fusion individually so when i talk about say fusion sir where do i see fusion i have already answered that fusion naturally is seen in stars our sun which is the ultimate source of all the heat and light energy to earth why is it running or what is the what is the reason behind energy of the sun there we look at thermonuclear fusion reaction now we see that any star be it sun or any other star it is a gas giant initially it is a gas giant where the nuclear fusion reaction starts that means hydrogen combines to form deuterium deuterium further combines to form com combines with uh, the normal hydrogen to form helium and helium helium they combine where we get helium plus again hydrogen so slowly and steadily what happens the amount of hydrogen it goes on reducing but you can see some of the hydrogen is again formed in this particular reaction meaning in a thermonuclear fusion reaction smaller nuclei like hydrogen deuterium etc they are combining to form helium there would come a day when the sun would run out of this hydrogen that would become the death of the star what would happen to it it, it might become a neutron star or it might basically turn into a black hole that we know right so it takes billions of years for that so thermonuclear fusion reaction can be seen predominantly in stars like our sun now your question would be sir why have we not why have we not gained expertise with thermonuclear fusion reaction on earth basically sir is there any thermonuclear fusion reactor on earth which is running at a commercial scale the answer would be no let me tell you i'm reiterating this again very strongly on earth in any country be it united states of america india any country developed developing whatever it is the reactors that we have developed they are all nuclear fission reactors there is no nuclear fusion reactor till now which is running on a commercial scale of course we are we have or we have developed some of the prototypes they are all experimental till now all right so please remember nuclear fusion based power it is not in operation on large scale anywhere anywhere yes the research has been going on since 1930s only because you do know there was a race between USA and USSR to gain prominence in terms of energy research as well. There was a space race, there was a nuclear energy race. So during that time, they tried to they tried to gain expertise over nuclear fusion. But the biggest problem with nuclear fusion reaction would be to gain that criticality or to gain that sustainability. Now you can see, just just look at this. This is the picture of sun. So imagine this is to be a picture of sun, extremely hot, extremely hot. Now, in a nuclear fusion reactor, the biggest problem would be, first of all, to start this fusion reaction. Now, imagine I give it input energy. Imagine I give, it, give X amount of input energy to it and I start the thermonuclear fusion reaction or nuclear fusion reaction for that matter. This will release energy. Now, how do I use this energy back? And if this energy is released, then a large amount of energy released is also required for sustaining the reaction. So I need to come up with some sort of a model where, first of all, I start the reaction, I reach criticality, I start the sustainable or the continuous, continuous uh, chain fusion reaction. Out of this, I also have to extract, extract energy, extract, correct? 
till now we have not been able to or we have, we have not created it has become very tough for us to create a viable model to confine the plasma or confine the area of reaction and to extract appropriate amount of heat because it would be very complex you do understand the temperature would be almost tens of thousands of degrees celsius what material will, will withstand that we are still designing those things but but the most the most advanced kind of reactor which is being built by many countries in partnership is the international thermonuclear experimental reactor in france 35 countries have come together it's a multi billion dollar program this one international thermonuclear experimental reactor in southern france it is being built and its intention is to produce 500 megawatt of electricity or 500 megawatts of energy this is very low right for, for 35 countries coming together to achieve this particular output you might think that it's quite illogical but this is a technology demonstration it's not just the combination of countries who have come for itr yes but there are many individual countries who are running their own experiments with respect to nuclear fusion one of the viable ideas one of the viable ideas that has come is this right i told you the problem is confining the plasma or confining the reaction substrate now imagine this is the nuclear fusion reaction which is occurring it is at a very very high temperature i wanted to confine it into some particular area because without confining it how would i expect that reaction to run continuously one two is how would i extract energy out of it? now see for instance if i have a nuclear fusion reactor i would have a big uh, i would have a big structure a concrete a concrete wall uh, and a steel reinforcement because if something goes wrong if a, if a meltdown occurs in a nuclear fusion reactor i want some protection so i create an area where nuclear fission is happening now a similar kind of area will concrete withstand will steel withstand no so what do i want i need some kind of a viable model where i can confine this entire reaction plasma in one particular area and till now one particular idea or one particular theory which is which has succeeded is this idea of tokamak now tokamak it is a device where magnetic field is used and this magnetic field is used to confine the nuclear fusion reaction plasma in a controlled way and the most viable shape till now is the shape of a torus torus is a shape like a donut you can see a donut like shape as of 2023 this is the most viable option although research is going on on tokamak as well as some other models like stellarator now stellarator its its shape is a little different from tokamak now tokamak is donut shaped this stellarator it it is uh, it is a complex asymmetrical magnetic field which is used and this model is being dubbed for continuous operation of nuclear fusion now torus or tokamak it can run intermittently that means you run the reaction or you run the operation for some time again you have to stop it then again restart the entire process but some of the ideas tokamak and stellarator stellarator can help in continuous operation all these are still in development phase yes some of the countries have achieved achieved uh, intermittent operation for instance china china is is running an operation on on uh, the idea of tokamak in their uh, experimental setup and they have said that by 2040 approximately they are going to create an artificial sun or they might be able to develop that artificial sun similarly united states of america is working on it european union is working on it many countries in europe are specifically working uk is also working france is working india is also working on the tokamak development we have a tokamak by the name of aditya aditya is a is a tokamak setup which is there in plasma research institute in ahmedabad but all these are still in experimental phase only i hope you do get the problem what what is the issue first of all designing designing the entire nuclear fusion reactor is a problem even if you design how do you control it tokamak is one viable alternative for that but for tokamak as well you do understand to extract the amount of heat and to run that entire operation i would first of all need a lot of coolants i would need a i would need a setup of huge cryo lines and to the itr india itself has provided kilometers together of cryo lines the pipelines which will carry the coolant because the entire tokamak setup and the the reactor setup it has to be cooled right so
still in development phase. That's the basic idea about nuclear fusion. But when we talk about nuclear energy, we see nuclear power plant and all the nuclear power plants throughout the world, wherever they are running, they work on the principle of nuclear fission only. And as I told you, nuclear fission means it's a nuclear fission chain reaction, a self a sustained nuclear chain reaction where a bigger nucleus, especially uranium, it breaks into other constant nuclei releasing energy. Now, how does this work? Now, we have already developed different kinds of nuclear reactors with, uh, with different techniques mainly to enhance its efficiency. This is the most common kind of nuclear fission based reactor. What do we, what do we need? We need heat out of it. Now, you do understand I need heat. So, a nuclear power plant, it works on the concept of nuclear fission reactor. Now, reactor core is this. Now, in this reactor core, you have the fuel. Now, what is the fuel that you use? Uranium. And once the fission reaction starts, I need to control them also. For that, I have control rods. And once the reaction runs, once it reaches criticality, sustainable reaction is running. That means it is releasing huge amount of heat energy. I use this heat energy for what? I use this heat energy to convert water into steam and this steam is used to run the turbine and the electric generator. And when the turbine and generator run, I get electricity and this electricity can be transmitted through the transmission line. It reaches the discoms, discoms would send it to your home. That's the basic idea. And every fission reactor, it basically works on this principle itself. Now, there can be a difference in these reactors where a reactor can be can have non pressurized boiling water for for instance uh, now this was a this was a reactor now this can be pressurized or non pressurized or this can uh, this can have heavy water to cool it can use normal water or it can also use heavy water heavy water it is composed of the hydrogen isotope that is d2o h2o is the normal formula of water d2o is the what is the formula of heavy water and if you think, sir, how does heavy water look? It looks very similar to what? Just some characteristics are different. Apart from that, we are trying to develop some other reactors where the, where the reaction leads to development of more and more fast neutrons so that I can, uh, I, can reach, I, can, I can reach criticality quick or I can run the sustainable nuclear fission reaction. We are also working on fast breeder reactors. Now, fast breeder reactors is an idea under the Indian policy where we will be using one kind of fuel and we want the reactor to produce some other type of again nuclear fuel itself. Now you do understand what is the meaning of that. I told you this is the reactor and this is the core. When the nuclear fission react reaction runs, I told you, I told you if I use uranium, now uranium breaks into something else. Now what does it break into? Can I get plutonium out of it? Can I get thorium out of it? Can I use uranium in a, in a reactor so that when uranium breaks, it generates more and more amount of other fissile metal that is called as a fast breeder reactor where fast neutrons are used and it, it creates more and more fuel. And then ultimately, we want to develop thorium based reactors as well. This is just uh, an idea. Till now, no country has been able to develop these thorium based reactors we are working on it now in this nuclear reactor in any general nuclear reactor what do we have we have fuel generally we use uranium oxide as of now in in the fission reactors that we have we use uranium oxide as fuel we need a moderator now this moderator it helps down the neutrons that are released during the fission reaction what kind of moderators do we use right now we use liquid water heavy water or graphite as moderator to reduce the speed of neutrons and if I want to absorb all the neutrons, I, that is called as control rod. Now, what is the meaning of control rod? If I want to stop the entire reaction, I will use the whole amount of control rods. All the neutrons are absorbed. These control rods are made up only, mostly of boron and cadmium. Apart from that, we do need coolant for these as well. Coolant can be uh, coolant can be heat. Uh, sorry, coolant can be water or or again heavy water. For basically as a heat exchanger, you can see here as a heat exchanger, I use coolant. Then I need a containment system. Now containment or confinement of that nuclear reaction in one particular area, it can be of a steel or a concrete setup. 
it's easier to design a nuclear fission reactor although i am mentioning it to be easier but there are a lot of technicalities involved in this as well because as i as i uh, tell you in in the subsequent section that nuclear energy has its own issues especially if there is a nuclear meltdown and these days there is a lot of talk of it and that's why we can expect some kind of question on nuclear energy what are the major issues with it uh, why it has been in news is because recently the uh, japanese they have released processed water from the fukushima incident you do know uh, in 2013 the fukushima nuclear reactor it melted there was a meltdown there and for the last 10 years whatever radioactive water was there because if there is a meltdown there is a threat of radioactivity and radioactive radiation was released there and that water according to japanese they have processed it it does not have any radiation or it does not have any threat and that's why they have released water into the ocean there was objection from south korea there was objection from china over this particular incident and a very interesting thing happened uh, the japanese prime minister fumio kishida a few days back he consumed one of the fish which was caught after releasing this particular water from those waters only a fish was uh, fish was caught and he consumed that fish right in front of media he said there is no danger to anybody right so you might expect these things right so this is about the nuclear fusion and nuclear fission reactors there is no commercial nuclear fusion reactor as of now only fission reactors are available these are the fusion reactors which are in development now what is our plan of action now for india the journey towards nuclear energy started in 1960s and one of the pioneers was homi jahangir baba homi jahangir baba he developed india's nuclear program and india's nuclear program it consists of three stages the first stage is to develop pressurized heavy water reactors and in this pressurized heavy water reactor in the core i use what kind of fuel i use a fuel natural uranium of course i have to enrich it for civilian purposes enrichment up to 20 25 percent is fine so i use natural uranium for a pressurized heavy water reactor then this leads to creation of what this leads to creation of depleted uranium uranium as well as plutonium meaning the byproduct of the first reactor would be depleted uranium and plutonium which we will be using in the fast breeder reactor now in the fast breeder reactor we will be using some amount of thorium and some amount of plutonium and this leads to breeding of uranium 233 and this uranium 233 along with thorium can be used in the thorium based reactors in future uranium 233 based fuel reactors and then ultimate idea would be to that we shift towards the thorium based reactors uh, that would be stage, stage 3 the stage 3 basically consists of breeding of uranium 233 and later on development of thorium based reactors where thorium and uranium 233 mixture can be used so this is again a logical kind of nuclear program that we have developed many a times questions have come on this as well i want you to get a feel of this just understand what is this it's it's a it's a logical nuclear program that homi baba developed where he said first we'll take uranium india has limited uh, limited reserves of uranium yes we have found out some uranium uh, recently in 2023 itself some of the states like jammu kashmir etc uh, where uranium exploration has been done and it is said that we have huge reserves of that but for commercial development or commercial use of that it will take almost a decade till that time we have to rely on on our own uranium mines and we have to import uranium from outside so use uranium from uranium whatever spent uranium or depleted uranium comes along with the plutonium comes use this use this along with some amount of thorium then create go to stage 3 stage 3 will have uranium 233 fuel breeders and then a mixture of uranium thorium can be applied there these are basically i would say thorium based reactors itself the stage 3 would be thorium based reactors now why why is that we'll talk about that in some time because we have huge reserves of thorium along the indian coast that is why thorium based reactors it makes sense for us now apart from this if you look at india's nuclear program our structure our uh, governing structure is something like this there is 
of course everything everything here it would be under directly central government that is pmo there is atomic energy commission under that there is department of atomic energy and the regulator is aerb atomic energy regulatory board aerb is the regulatory board under the department of atomic energy we have different sections which are doing research and which are doing development of different stages for instance fast breeder reactor it is being developed by a, a corporation a public sector enterprise called as bhavini most of the power projects that are currently operational in india they are all run and governed by npcil meaning if i sign any agreement between india and say some other country as well from india npcil would be representing from india npcil and whatever company from the other country they would be collaborating for uranium there is another company called as ucil and for fuel cycle fuel cycle we have created nuclear fuel complex which is under the department of atomic energy please remember when we get the fuel say imagine i take uranium fuel it has to undergo different process first process is refining of uranium then i convert uranium into fissile material then i enrich it please remember enrichment enrichment is not very high for civilian users for a weapons grade it has to be enriched almost to 90% but for normal civilian use around 20% of enrichment is enough then i have to fabricate the fuel why i have to use this in terms of rods this was the structure i showed you now whatever the reactor is set up for that i need processed fuel and that needs some sort of fabrication so that is the fuel cycle and finally after the nuclear fission reaction is run whatever depleted fuel is left out i have to reprocess that as well so this fuel complex it also comes under the uh, department of atomic energy although the central government it wanted to create different regulatory boards for that a bill was brought in 2011 by upa government later on the nda government had also brought a bill in 2015 but nothing has happened as of now this is the only regulatory authority till now today atomic energy regulatory board all right so under this itself all the regulations all the approvals happen under this board clear till now if you ask is there any other is there any other private nuclear power plant no in india the entire concept of nuclear energy it is under the domain of state itself clear it is in the domain of state now i am not talking about distribution companies many distribution companies have been privatized but jenkos the nuclear jenkos or the nuclear generating companies they are all governed or they are all regulated under the npcl npcl is the nodal agency for that right now apart from this when we talk about india's nuclear program or nuclear journey yes we have created a very ambitious three stage program for nuclear energy uh, the first stage natural uranium is used later on the depleted uranium plutonium and thorium and finally thorium based thorium based plant uh, but the development of this has not happened in an extraordinary way if you ask me the status as of today if you ask me the status as of today stage 1 is achieved stage 1 is achieved we have achieved stage 1 that means we have created we have first created the simple simple uh, reactors that means non pressurized reactors we also created non pressurized heavy water reactors later on we also developed pressurized heavy water reactors so stage 1 expertise has already been achieved by india in fact if you look at today's india's nuclear energy status we generate more than 6700 megawatt of nuclear power nuclear power plants are situated in different states in tamil nadu we have kudanakulam there is in tamil nadu there is one more plant called as kalpakam in karnataka there is kaiga, kaiga power plant there is tarapur in maharashtra there is kakrapara there is rajasthan uh, the rajasthan power plant there is narora power plant so power plants are many there are more than 20 power plants which are active in india and all of them all of them they are stage 1 only that means they are either pressurized water reactors non pressurized water reactors and most of them are pressurized heavy water reactors what about stage 2 stage 2 is the fast breeder reactor fast breeder reactor now fast breeder reactor technology or prototype reactor is being built by bhavini bhavini is the bharatiya navikya vidyut nigam limited which is still building 
again uh, they were supposed to give us by 2022 itself the first prototype of fast builder reactor which is going to consume less amount of nuclear fuel and give more and more amount of or, or it is going to breed more nuclear fuel which we can use in future the tests for that are still going on by 2022 it was supposed to be done but again because of covid 19 there has been some delay uh, so we'll wait and watch when this will happen but stage 3 there is stage 3 only testing is going on there is not even talk of prototype etc the government was asked a question that you have created a three stage plan a three stage program when will we achieve it the central government in parliament has answered that large scale thorium deployment can be achieved probably in the next 3 to 4 decades so i would say by 2050 probably by 2050 we might get a development of thorium based power plant but as of now as of now if you ask me a question sir where are we we are right now in stage 1 we have achieved expertise in stage 1 for stage 2 some prototypes are being built again bhavini is responsible for that they are building it and we'll we'll get a result very soon stage 3 is far away okay now you have a question sir why is this happening you said okay we have created a plan we have created a regulatory setup and what is the reason behind this delay one of the big issues was india's nuclear pariah status what happened was we started our nuclear power uh, power energy or nuclear power uh, journey during the first or i would say during the tenure of first prime minister jawaharlal nehru in 1960 we came up with first nuclear power plant if i'm not wrong there was in rajasthan only in 1960 but later on later on when the npt was brought the nuclear non proliferation treaty was brought in 1967 it started to be enforced from 1968 from the very next year india said we will not sign it why because this npt created the structure where throughout the world there would be nuclear haves and nuclear have nots so what india did was they said we are not going to sign npt because this is discriminatory you are telling me that anyone who has gained nuclear capability or who has gained nuclear weapons before 1967 they will have nuclear weapons and all other people they are not supposed to even develop those i do not accept this and that is why that is why india remained a nuclear pariah for a very long time for a very long time initially we tested our first nuclear weapons or nuclear testing was done in 1974 later on in 1998 we gained the nuclear status that means we developed our own nuclear weapons now because of this india remained a nuclear pariah meaning i had to develop my own technology i had to develop everything on my own in fact i had now i was not even getting uranium from outside or nuclear fuel from outside so i had to mine uranium i had to develop my own technology slowly and steadily we did it and it's a commendable job that we have completed or we have gained expertise over stage 1 However, things changed and from last, I would say 10 to 15 years, since the signing of the Indo-US Indo civil nuclear deal, that nuclear pariah status has ended and now we are going to get, get more and more traction on this nuclear energy. Post-2008, India has signed nu civil nuclear agreements with more than 20 countries. It includes USA, Australia, Kazakhstan, Japan, yes, of course, so many countries and uh, many of these countries now they have started exporting us uranium predominantly uzbekistan kazakhstan canada australia they are now sending us uranium because uh, to to run that because we have now uh, i would say we have now shed that nuclear pariah status we have signed indo us civil nuclear deal yes we have not signed npt we have not signed ctbt the comprehensive test ban treaty despite that we have got a specific waiver for NSG, the nuclear suppliers group. That means throughout the world, there is a there is a group of countries, more than 40 countries are a part of nuclear suppliers groups. That means they have nuclear, uh, they have nuclear, uh, nuclear material reserves, right? And those from that we have gained a waiver. That means people can now supply uranium to us only for civilian purpose. Please remember, remember please pardon me, please remember only for civilian purposes okay all right right so that nuclear pariah status has gone and slowly and steadily we are developing and the news is 
positive itself. Apart from some of the nuclear reactors that I told you, India is also working on some new prototypes like these. A nuclear reactor which is built on accelerator driven, driven systems. An advanced heavy water reactor is also in testing. A prototype is being built. Apart from that, compact high temperature reactors and molten salt reactors, these are also in development apart from the three phase development that we have given or that Omi Jangir Baba had given. Apart from those three type of reactors, we are also working on these reactors as well. All right. Now, the news is also quite positive for nuclear energy. Now, we started with one of the questions which said that should we promote more and more of nuclear energy? Indian government is doing it. What happened in COP26 in November 2021? From Indian side, Indian Prime Minister, he promised Panchamrat. Five promises. And one of the promises is to reach non-fossil fuel energy capacity of 500 gigawatt by 2030. By 2030. Now, to achieve this particular target, India has said, yes, we are going to spend money on solar power, we are going to spend money on wind power, etc. But we are also going to increase our nuclear reactors. These red ones are already operational. I told you there is a power plant in Narora, there is a power plant in Rajasthan, there is a power plant in Kakrapara, Tarapur, Kaiga, Kalpakam and Kudanakulam. These are operational. More than 20, if I am not wrong, 22 reactors are right now active for India. Apart from this, India has already sanctioned many other nuclear power plants. There is a power plant which has been sanctioned in Mithivardi in Gujarat. There is a power plant which has been sanctioned in Jaitapur in Maharashtra, in Banswara, in Chutka, in Kovada. Many, many of the nuclear power plants, Gorakhpur power plant has also been approved. That means in the upcoming years, more and more nuclear energy and its development is expected. Many countries had criticized that India is going for a very risky bet. They have said that they'll reduce non-fossil fuel energy. That means 500 gigawatt would come from non-fossil fuel. Please remember, nuclear power is a non-fossil fuel based energy only. Yes, I can say it is not renewable, but I can put it in the domain of clean energy if I do everything to safety. So, what has happened is the government of India has also told that the existing nuclear capacity that we have is 6780. This is this is or this has been constant uh, from uh, I would say 2019 from the time uh, the two reactors have become critical for, for Kudanakulam, Kudanakulam reactors. Kudanakulam 3 and 4, uh, they have gained criticality. Since that time, it's same 6780. But the Indian government has said by 2031, we are going to almost triple this number. We are going to reach 22,480 megawatt power capacity by 2031. And that's why we have approved so many power plants. Again, uh, in examination, if you are running short of time, if there is a question on nuclear energy, nuclear power, then uh, I would always advise you to, you can always use a map of India, draw a map of India and explain explain about the uh, nuclear power plants that we have already and what what are planned something like this apart from that question can also uh, be asked about nuclear reserves we have limited uranium reserves as of now which we are exploiting most of the uranium it comes from chota nagpur plateau one of the biggest biggest uh, site is jaduguda the jaduguda mines are they are operational as of now apart from that the second largest uranium exploitation is happening from mines in Andhra Pradesh in the Kadapa Basin predominantly from the Tumalapalle from the Tumalapalle plants or the Tumalapalle uh, region and Pedagattu region. Tumalapalle and Pedagattu region in Andhra in the Kadapa Basin uh, uranium is being exploited from there and from Jaduguda mines or the I would say from Chota Nagpur plateau there are many areas uh, Jaduguda, Narvapahar, Turamdi, these are the areas from where uranium is already being exploited. There are some other areas where uranium has been found out. In recent times, uranium has been found out in northeastern region, in the northern part, in some places in, in Rajasthan. But again, uh, operational mines or, or developing uh, that to the operational level, it will take time. That means we currently have to rely on 
imports from other countries and right now we are already getting uranium imports uh, from Kazakhstan, from Canada, from Australia, from Uzbekistan, these countries. Apart from that, why we have a third stage which is based on thorium because we have huge thorium reserves along the eastern coast of India. In the eastern coast of India, in the coastal areas, we find something called as a monazite fine sand and we find huge reserves of this monazite ore and this monazite ore can be exploited for thorium and if we are able to develop a thorium based reactor it is going to be ground breaking we do not need anybody we don't need any we have our own fuel we if we have our own technology we can run our own nuclear reactor all right so that's the basic status or so that's the basic development under the nuclear science and technology in india and please remember when I say nuclear science and technology, everybody, everybody has a very narrow viewpoint because we have that confirmation bias. They say, okay, nuclear energy. I know, I know nuclear energy. I have read about nuclear power plants in Kaiga. I have read about Kalpakam. I have read about Kudankulam, right? Tarapur, etc. Immediately your mind shifts to nuclear energy. Yes, I get it. And that too, nuclear fusion based energy because fusion based energy is not operational at all. But please remember, nuclear energy or technology connected to atomic nuclei they are used in many other areas yes for generating electricity i agree but in industry in mining in food and agriculture in space exploration for environmental protection for hydrology for medicine in in many areas we work yes electricity for food safety in terms of science and technology research for space missions, this is something which is which is being uh, tested now, mostly by United States of America. India is also working on this in collaboration with different countries, predominantly with Israel and Japan. We have collaboration. In cosmetic products, in medicine, you must be thinking, sir, nuclear technology in cosmetic, nuclear technology in agriculture, for some other novel applications, we are using it. Let me talk about some of the applications. Please remember, yes, of course. The biggest application that we know of is nuclear power plant that means to generate electricity but apart from that nuclear technology or nuclear science, science and its applications can be seen even in agriculture and food industry. Why? To reduce the number of pests and bugs. Nuclear irradiation or control nuclear irradiation it can be used to kill bacteria and other harmful organisms in food. It can be used for sterilization. Recently, one of the research is going on to create sterile insects. Nuclear energy or nuclear based irradiation is used on mosquitoes. Now, because of this irradiation, male mosquitoes will become sterile. And these male mosquitoes are then, then, then released into the areas with mosquito population. Now, if male are sterile, then there is no future progeny. That means the mosquito population can go down. Yes, there are different kinds of research going on. Uh, this kind of research is going on with respect to genetic modification as well, where uh, one of the ideas is going on to modify the genes in male mosquito to make it sterile. Also to identify the female mosquitoes which are genetically modified, right? Such a research is going on. But one of the simplest ideas is also this sterile injection technology where through nuclear irradiation, male mosquitoes are turned sterile and then they are released into the population that means mosquito population future population it will be gone that's one of the research going on apart from that in medical you do know uh, nuclear technologies they provide images inside human body which help to diagnose and treat diseases in fact uh, nuclear radiation or Directed nuclear radiation is also being used to treat cancerous cells. If you look at one of the applications in medical, we have NMR technology. In medical, we have nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, which is based on the idea of Zeeman effect. Zeeman effect. Now, Zeeman, he was the one who observed a strange behavior when certain nuclei, if they are subjected to strong magnetic field, they would behave in some way, and we can we can create an image on the basis of that. So, what happens in nuclear magnetic resonance is a, a small 
injection is given some liquid is given again non radioactive it is again it is non radioactive but it is some kind of nuclei when it interacts with magnetic field it can give you these spectroscopy based images and doctors use this for diagnosis apart from this another area where nuclear technology is being developed is space exploration as of now as of now we rely mostly on solar energy you must have seen the recent chandrayaan 3 on chandrayaan 3 the lander the vikram lander on all the four sides there are solar panels you must have seen the rover also the rover slowly moved and i think right now it has moved around uh, say around 50 meters recently it even sent an image of that lander the rover took an image of the lander and it sent it right? we saw that in the news etc how is it being powered it is powered through nuclear energy and that is why the life of the life of this entire project of chandrayaan 3 it is dubbed as approximately 14 earth days correct 14 days why because it is at the south pole then solar energy will not be available for it it, it may not be powered right later on yes uh, after another 14 days we might be able to recapture or regain connectivity with it but with certainty isro is not telling anything as of now imagine imagine if i am able to power that lander and that rover through some kind of some kind of power systems which can be used for a very long time and one of the examples of that is nuclear technology now if i use if i use some sort of an instrument where nuclear energy or that nuclear power is used used then it can be it can lead eventually to deep space operations now us is also work, us is also working on it indian uh, agency isro is also uh, trying to develop these things but right now isro is planning pardon me right now nasa is planning by 2026 a spacecraft which will be powered completely by nuclear energy itself now if that happens then power would be available for a very long time i wouldn't say perpetually of course it, it, it cannot be available perpetually but if we send enough amount of nuclear fuel with it then slowly and steadily by controlled reaction nuclear power can be given to it for a very longer time the operation can be run apart from that nuclear energy is also being used for water desalination the world nuclear association has noted that the uh, large amount of populations that do not have water yes they have ocean water available with it from ocean water we have to remove those salts and for that nuclear based water desalination plants are also in operation already so many operations or many applications have come up uh, please remember that it's not just about electricity it's about other applications as well so that uh, you make your answer wholesome all right good now till now what we have discussed is nuclear technology the nuclear power plant different applications but there are always dangers associated when we use nuclear science and nuclear technology based applications it can impact human health it can impact environmental health why because the workers are always at a risk of radiation we saw what happened in fukushima we, we saw what happened in chernobyl even today chernobyl is like a zombie land fukushima it is like a zombie land only so there are health issues for humans there are environmental issues for humans specially connected with radiation and that radiation can be present in the environment for a very long time it might hamper even the future generation there are dangers which are associated with the with the distraction especially a lot of people might think that nuclear energy is a is a is a panacea for all the problems that we have no it can create problems so if i am spending more and more amount of money on nuclear energy what about the other renewable energies should do i have to bet or should i bet on this or not there is always a danger of waste disposal because yes we use we use nuclear material we process it but some byproducts are there where do i where do i dispose them off how do i dispose them off do i dispose them off underground do i dispose them off deep inside ocean one of the ideas that scientists are talking about is is uh, some 
some space based releases or some space based launches where nuclear waste is dumped into the space but what would be the implication we do not know so waste disposal is a problem of course there is a high cost which is always there because any nuclear power plant as of now if you talk about india all the power plants are with the government that means it is being funded by the taxpayers money and the initial cost is very very high the initial cost is high if there is if there is say any issue if there is a nuclear meltdown and if there is some harm to the society some harm to the environment then what is the liability who will pay the liability now we have seen this we have seen uh, liability based issues with fukushima with chernobyl with many other with many other incidents who is liable for these if it impacts a, a section of society some people uh, we have seen the liability issues with bhopal gas tragedy although not new connected to nuclear energy but a simple chemical disaster whose liability is still not paid paid even till today since 1980s apart from this there is always danger of nuclear war and nuclear terrorism this is always a danger we do not know if a country or if anybody is using nuclear based technologies for peaceful purposes only yes we have our own power plants but along with those power plants is someone trying to build a dirty bomb we don't know what happens if this nuclear technology it reaches to terrorists will there be a threat of nuclear terrorism is there a or is there a danger which is perpetual of a nuclear war because there are nuclear weapons already with the countries now what happens if it reaches some of the rogue states or rogue organizations there is always a threat of nuclear war apart from that as i told you civil liberties there is always an issue of liability so a lot of problems are connected with nuclear energy mainly the cost of the plants is very high along with it i would say the insurance cost it reaches to a large large amount that is why uh, if you talk about say uh, nuclear development in india i gave you the timeline from 1960s and i told you india was mostly pariah from 1968 till 2008 but can you tell me any nuclear power plant which has been built in india which is operational as of today where we have developed it in collaboration with united states of america you are thinking now sir yes i i, I did not think about this we signed the deal in 2008 it has been 15 years now and in these 15 years no us company or i i wouldn't say development is not happening yes many nuclear power plants are in development but indo us nuclear deal has not fructified eventually into any kind of nuclear power plant till date yes probably in future we will see but one of the issues was again the problem of liability the liability problem was resolved in 2015 almost after 7 years till today there is no operational nuclear power plant which has resulted out of indo us collaboration yes because of that deal uh, we are no more nuclear pariah we have got a waiver for the nsg a lot of benefits have come but there are issues right there are so many problems issues dangers which are associated with nuclear technology clear right i hope if a question comes on nuclear science and technology you will be able to answer it handsomely you have Uh, you have enough fodder enough ideas right uh, again i always tell the aspirants that there is there is no best answer in upsc civil services means there is always a correct answer and a good answer ensure that you address the question correctly and add content to it which is quality that makes your answer decent and good right? there is no concept of excellence do not do not seek for that excellence okay right i do that note uh, let's end today's discussion and if you like today's discussion you can always follow me on this particular id uh, if you have any queries you can always reach out to me and hopefully this video will help you address the questions connected to nuclear science and technology whose probability of appearing i would say is quite high especially because of uh, the fukushima development that is happening this year all right right we'll meet in the next session again before going i wish you again the wish you again with respect to this festival of siblings happy rakshabandhan see you soon jai hind